വെൽക്കം ടു ഇ പി ജി പാഠശാല ഐ എം ഡോക്ടർ പി പി അജയകുമാർ പ്രൊഫസർ ഓഫ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് ഡിസ്റ്റൻസ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് കേരള ടുഡേ വി വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് ദ പോയം ദ വേസ്റ്റ് ലാൻഡ് ബൈ ടി എസ് എലിയട്ട് ദിസ് ഇസ് ഇൻക്ലൂഡഡ് ഇൻ ദ പേപ്പർ ട്വൻറ്റി സെഞ്ചുറി ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ ആസ് എവറിബഡി നോസ് ടി എസ് എലിയട്ട് വാസ് എൻ എമിനൻറ്റ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് പോയിറ്റ് perhaps the most famous poet of the 20th century writing poetry he also wrote plays literary criticism etc and he is one of the major figures of english literature who can be termed as a poet critic before him there were poet critics like dryden Wordsworth, Matthew Arnold, etc. Eliot comes in the same tradition. Eliot's name was Thomas Stearns Eliot and he is one of the representative poets of modern age. Other famous modernists are James Joyce, D.H. Lawrence, Virginia Woolf, who were novelists. and Ezra Pound he was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1948 The Waste Land is the masterpiece of Eliot published in 1922 The Waste Land is today the most widely translated and studied English language poem of the 20th century it is one of the most difficult poems as well modernism is well known for its obscurity and its intellectual quality so modernist writings are very difficult to understand but even then the wasteland became extremely popular and its phenomenal success is due to its novelty as a poem as well as its contemporary relevance in this poem eliot focuses mainly on the sterility and the dryness of modern culture and the lack of tradition and ritual the first draft of the poem was a longer version it was reduced and compressed with the help of his friend and poet esra pond as a result what happened was that the poem became trimmed and at the same time became more obscure the wasteland still remains at touchstone of english language canon eliot had wide knowledge in the myths and legends from different parts of the world he was influenced mainly by two important books one is jesse westerns from ritual to romance and the other is sir james frazee's the golden bow other important sources include the bible upanishads buddha's fire sermon and he profusely quotes from authors like geoffrey chaucer william shakespeare edmund spenser aldous huxley andrew marvel walt whitman and even baudelaire ovid and homer Eliot uses several myths and legends in this poem. One of the legendary figures that appear in this poem is Fisher King. Fisher King is the important ruler who made his kingdom an infertile wasteland. Weston and Fraser narrate ancient stories of healing the Fisher King to make the land fertile. so it is connected with the 
traditional concept of fertility myths. Eliot brilliantly adapts the legend of the Fisher Kings and his wasteland to illustrate the deteriorating condition of modern society. The great legend is another reference that we find in the poem. The Holy Grail is believed to be the cup in which the blood of Jesus Christ was collected. It is believed to have healing powers. The young knight Percival was one of King Arthur's legendary knights of the round table. During his quest of the Holy Grail, he stays in the castle of the Fisher King. The legend of Oedipus. Oedipus was the king of Thebes. He unknowingly killed his father and married his mother, invoking the wrath of the gods. When he knew the truth, he became blind and the land became infertile. Tiresias is another important legendary figure that appears in the poem. The legendary soothsayer Tiresias was gifted with prophecy and immortality. Tiresias is one of the narrators of this poem. According to the legends, Tiresias was punished by goddess Hera who changed him into a woman. He was also struck blind by goddess Athena because he saw her bathing naked. Eliot uses Tiresias as a narrator because he has enjoyed both manhood and womanhood. The poem The Wasteland adopts a novel technique of narration. It follows the fragmentary narrative form. It lacks continuity. The, there are disconnected episodes juxtaposed in the poem and the narration is monologic in nature but at the same time there are many narrators. More than that there is an excellent use of the cinematic technique in the poem. The poem jumps from one scene to the other, juxtaposing images upon image in rapid succession just as in a, in a movie is used in this poem. Another important fact is, is its intertextuality references from various texts belonging to various cultures, different languages are used in this poem. We find that though the poem is in English, there are quotations from different languages, Latin, Greek, German and Sanskrit. The poem is dedicated to Ezra Pond. In the beginning of the poem, he writes, Il Miglior Fabro, which means the better craftsman. This dedication can be seen as a mark of his gratitude to Pond for his efforts to edit this poem. The Wasteland was published in 1922 four years after the First World War. It is clear that the experiences of the post-World War London and in a larger sense that of Europe was imbibed by the poet and expressed through this poem. The epigraph of this poem is taken from 
satiricon by Petronius Arbiter. The epigraph speaks about Sibyl, a mythological character. According to mythology, Sibyl was granted immortality by Apollo, but she forgot to ask for eternal youth. Hence, her body withered away till only her voice was left and she was eventually kept in a jar. The epigraph points out that like Sibyl, men and women living in the modern wasteland fear life and are haunted by the wish to die. This pessimism is reflected throughout the poem. The poem is divided into five sections. The first one is the burial of the dead. Second section is titled a game of chess. Third, the fire sermon. Fourth, death by water. Fifth, what the thunder said. The burial of the dead is actually an extract from the Anglican funeral service. The poem begins on a harsh note with a reference to the April month. April is the cruelest month. That is how the poem begins. In this line, we can find an echo of Chaucer's prologue to the Canterbury Tales. The prologue begins with a reference to April. But during Chaucer's time, April was a very enjoyable month because it suggests the beginning of spring season. But in the 20th century, it becomes cruel because the people are reluctant to wake up from the deep slumber that they had during winter. The narrator in this section is perhaps a representative of Eliot himself. The spring season brings memory and desire. And so the narrator's memory drifts back to times in Munich, to his childhood days. As a child, he used to ride on the sled. He also thinks about a possible romance with a hyacinth girl. The narrator is now surrounded by a desolate land full of stony rubbish. He also remembers a fortune teller named Madame Sosostris, who said to him, that he was the drowned Phoenician sailor and that he should fear death by water. Next, he finds himself on London Bridge surrounded by a crowd of people. There he spots a friend of him from wartime and calls him so in the first section, we come across the narrator's juxtaposition of the past and the present. The title, A Game of Chess, is taken from a Jacobian play, Women Beware Women, by Thomas Middleton. In this play, a young wife is seduced by a duke. At that time, her naive mother-in-law is playing a game of chess. The title, A Game of Chess, alludes to the depressing state of sexual relationships in the modern wasteland. The two episodes in this section expose contrasting images of women belonging to high and low classes in society. One woman mentioned in this section 
was a rich lady decorated with jewels who complains about her nurse and wonders what to do the section also presents ladies belonging to the lower strata of the society we find few women sitting in a pub at the closing time talking to each other within a few stanzas we move from the upper class society to the lower section of the society mm. the women were gossiping about one of their friends whose husband was coming after a gap of 4 years they commented that she should appear good when he comes in the same section we find two different women belonging to two different sections of the society we move from the upper class to the lower class the third section the fire sermon presents eliot's observations on the modern wasteland this is perhaps the longest section and the most complex one the title the fire sermon alludes to buddha's fire sermon which urges men to give up their attachment to worldly desires which is symbolized by fire the title also echoes saint augustine's words thus representing a synthesis of both eastern and western philosophies the section the fire sermon opens with an image of a river the narrator sits on the banks and muses on the deplorable state of the world as tiresias he sees a young carbuncular man hope into bed with a lonely female typist only to aggressively make love to her and then leave without hesitation the poem returns to the river where maidens sing a song of lament one of them crying over her loss of innocence to a similarly lustful man the next section death by water is the fourth section of the poem the death by water describes a dead phoenician lying in the water he may be the same drowned sailor of whom madam sosostris spoke eliot tries to suggest that modern people live selfish and meaningless lives on their own terms with no concern for others they are indifferent to and devoid of any good emotion eliot advises them to repent and be spiritually reborn he feels that they will be doomed to the same fate as phlebas irrespective of whether they are gentile or jew if they do not repent or if they are not not ready to be reborn spiritually the fifth section what the thunder said shifts the focus from the sea to the rocks the narrator cries for rain and it finally comes the thunder that accompanies it ushers in the three pronged dictum sprung from brihadaranika upanishad datta dayadvam damyada 
to give, to sympathize, to control. With these commandments, benediction is supposed to be possible. Eliot feels that despite the collapse of civilization that is underway, there is still a possibility of benediction. He writes, London bridges falling down, falling down, falling down. Tiresias, the narrator of the poem, asks humanity to give and surrender as it is more important than preserving memories and honoring obituaries. According to him, each one is in his selfish, egotistic prison, suffering from loneliness, like Shakespeare's Coriolanus. They shall show compassion for others. Tiresias finally remarks that man lacks self-control, which leads to chaos and unhappiness. The image of the Fisher King collecting fragments from ruins with hopes to rebuild reappears in the end. The reference to Mad Hieronimo, who is a character in the Spanish tragedy, reveals the anger and frustration of the poet at the collapse of the Western culture. However, it could be said that the poet is still optimistic and that is why the poem ends with a Sanskrit line, O oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Now we could discuss some of the important themes in this poem. One of the themes, death is referred in the poem at different sections the burial of the dead and death by water specifically refers to death. The death of Christ was an act of redemption. By dying, Christ tried to purify the world out of evil. So, in this poem, what matters is the meaning of death. What can death do to life? If death can pave for a new way of life or if it can generate new life, that will be a positive thing. The poem also presents the damaged psyche of humanity. Many modernist writers discussed this experience of the modern society, the fragile psychological state of the 20th century European society is presented in this poem. Another important reference is to the changing nature of gender roles. Gender roles and sexuality became increasingly flexible and Eliot refers to these changes in his work. The transformation from the repressive Victorian period to the free modern period is traced in this poem. Another theme that can be identified in this poem is fragmentation. Eliot used fragmentation in his poetry to demonstrate the chaotic stage of modern existence and the very structure of the poem is fragmentary in nature. We find that the contemporary experience of 
ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी इंग्लैंड इज सर्टनली द बैकग्राउंड ऑफ दैट काइंड ऑफ एन एक्सपीरियंस द कोलैप्स ऑफ द ब्रिटिश एम्पायर द हॉरर्स ऑफ द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर ऑल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड टू दिस fragmented mental state rebirth is another theme that we find in this poem the image of christ along with many other religious metaphors refer to rebirth and resurrection in the poem the wasteland the fisher king a legendary figure is presented as an important king what is needed is a new beginning a rebirth water can bring about that rebirth but it can also destroy what the poet is trying to bring about is a kind of restoration of life the wasteland is a poem which is multi dimensional in nature an understanding of this poem requires a serious reading referring to all the different texts that has been used in this poem it is seen as a mosaic of images which depicts man's journeys from birth from the past to the present and to the future culminating in his death i think this lecture is just an introduction to the poem you will have to go through the text as well as the secondary material to get a better understanding of the poem hope you will refer the section for further reading and other materials available on this poem for getting a comprehensive idea about the poem thank you